السلام عليكم ورحمة الله حياكم الله في بودكاست نمو ويلكم ايفري وان ذيس از نمو بودكاست ذيس از احمد ال الشيخ ذا تشيف ستاف اند ذا تشيف ترانسفورميشن اوفيسر اتس بين ا وايل مشاعل سينس وي بابلشت اور لاست بودكاست بت فاينلي وي ار باك وذ ا فيري سبيشال جيست اند بيفور اي انتروديوس اور سبيشال جيست فيو ثينجز اي وود لايك تو شير وذ يو وان You might wonder why we are doing this podcast in English. Well, I have no option but to make an exception today. Our guest promised me that he will learn Arabic, but so far he knows Insha'Allah and Yallah, which will not be enough to run this uh, this podcast. Uh, two, we are not going to speak about any specific uh, transformation work stream. We are going to speak about Ma'adin values, which is about everything we are doing in, in Ma'adin. And lastly, Uh, I'm not going to be anymore the Namu podcast host, Mshaal Amir. She's leading the change management uh, office. She will be the host going forward for all uh, Namu uh, podcast. Mshaal, along with all the BMO team, are the real heroes in the transformation. My role is just to take the credit out of them. So uh, uh, today, as I promise you, we have a very special guest. Allow me to introduce our Chief Ecosystem Officer, Bob Welt. Bob, welcome to Nemo Podcast. <laughs> thanks, Ahmed. <laughs> and thanks for the kind introduction and reminder that I only speak two words of Arabic. I'd like to make a correction. I think I speak five. But, but, I, but I hope everybody in the, in the audience can feel our sense of humor and our relationship and our bond. Because we're going to talk about values today. And underpinning a lot of our values is the the friendships we're making. And uh, I just thank you for the friendship and the support you've given me over the last two years and look forward to many more together. Indeed. Bob, you know, Msha'al is the boss today. So this morning she reminded me that I will have only one question. That's why I have this very little microphone <laughs> and she has this nice one. Okay. So Bob, it's been now almost two years since you have taken this role. And I'm sure before you take this post, you have done your due diligence about Ma'adan, about the kingdom, about the vision 2030. And if you look to what happened in Ma'adan front only in the last two years, we launched the biggest exploration program probably in the world. We established a couple of partnerships. We announced few exciting discovery. This is only at Ma'adan front. But if you look in, into what happening in the kingdom overall, Red Sea project is up and running. Neom launched a couple of projects. We won Expo 2030. Probably we will host the World Cup in 2034. So there are a lot of things that is happening in the kingdom. Today, we are in Al-Ula, which is a product of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Vision 2030. So what is your reflection on everything happening in the kingdom now? Well, so I can go back. I can go back 33 years when I first came here with the army during Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. And then again in 2010 with Alcoa. But if you just look at the, just the last three weeks, I have gotten to see so much uh, progress in the kingdom. So first we had the Future Minerals Forum, the third annual Future Minerals Forum, where 133 countries were represented uh, in Riyadh to talk about minerals and mining. This is the mining hub now globally and the place to, to be and talk about. Then we went to the World Economic Forum in Davos, where the kingdom shined. I mean, Sabic, Aramco, Five Ministries, Mod and Neom were all there. And the world wanted to talk to us. The world is looking at Saudi Arabia. And then we come to Alula, which I've had the good fortune of seeing a lot of the world. And I, tell, I, I assure you, this is the most stunning place I've ever been the most beautiful, magical place I've ever been. So just in three weeks time, I take an enormous amount of pride in being an adopted Saudi. I can't even imagine how proud you all must be, what's going on in your country, the, the, the change, the diversification, the, 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 the speed of, of which things are happening here. And it's not just promises. When I came, when I came here two years ago, a lot of the stuff was talk and we were wondering, is it going to happen? And it's happening at such a rapid pace now that the world is noticing. And I just take, I, I'm just proud to be part of it. That's awesome. Thank you, Ahmed. 
Thank you for sticking to one question, <laughs> even though it was a long question, but <laughs> it's great. And a very inspiring uh, answer, Bob. Thank you. Uh, Ahmed referred to you as the chief ecosystem officer. Uh, why do you think he said that? I think the we're, because we're building more than just a company. We're building an industry in, in Saudi Arabia with, with the third pillar, with mining. And with, with that becomes, obviously, we have to build the company. We have to build modern. We have to build the supply chain and the suppliers. But we also have, have to build a culture. And if we think about some of the important things we have to do, um, there's a lot of technical things we have to solve. But one of the things that's going to knit it all together is making the culture right. So getting the culture and the ecosystem between the government, the PIF, modern, our employees, our suppliers, our customers, getting all that right is uh, building that ecosystem is more than just building the company. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And um, Bob, actually, you know, in reflection, uh, I want to take you back to your f very few, uh, first days in Ma'adan. Uh, you came here and as uh, Ahmed mentioned, you know, you, you've come to a country that has a lot of potential and that's, you know, acting on this potential. And um, when you came, I remember there was uh, the workshop we did to, uh, to kickstart Namu. And there was one slide, and uh, I remember it, maybe I'm biased because, <laughs> as usual, it has my picture, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but there were, uh, there was, you know, your leadership principles that you wrote down uh, that are important to you. And when we looked at them, it was, you know, one by one match to Ma'adan values. Yeah. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, so the, yeah, so the workshop you're referring to is when we launched NUMU, the transformation. So when we got here, we had the board had just approved the 10x growth strategy. So I inherited the growth strategy, you know, first day on the job, it lands on my desk and we have to figure out okay, how we're going to implement this. So I kind of went around um, and did an assessment of what it would take to actually make that happen and where the gaps were. So we pulled 80 some people into into the retreat in Riyadh during Ramadan that year, which was very memorable for me still. Um, but what underpins the all the work that we needed to do was values-based leadership. And it was, it was ironic to me as I was reflecting on my first couple of months on the job that the same principles I learned at West Point in the U.S. were applicable to transforming modern. And it's just values-based leadership. And that's why I think as we talk about values today and building the culture, I hope people can understand that if we get the values right, that they're timeless, no matter what the strategy is, no matter what the economic changes are, the product diversification, a lot of the things that are going to inevitably change between now and 2040 as we execute the growth strategy if we get the values right, we can solve any problem. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, as we've seen recently with the increase in uh, diesel prices, surprising, you know, how can leading by values uh, help us, you know, mitigate any uh, sudden uh, things that can happen? So if you think about the, the so the values we've, we talk about, there's four core modern values and we're introducing a fifth, but the, the four are integrity, ownership, care and teamwork and we're introducing continuous improvement so yes we just approved the 2024 plan on december 18th with the board two weeks later price increases were announced for for natural gas and diesel prices and red sea shipping was disrupted so within a matter of two two weeks of our plan being adopted and approved we have massive headwinds facing us so without me even doing things, our organization responded by holding workshops and seminars to try and find offsets. That's teamwork and that's ownership. That they, the, the groups already own their plans, they own their results, and they're taking initiative to offset that. So that's living our values, pulling a team together, different functions and owning the results and trying to offset headwinds and not making excuses. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, and it takes more than just one leader or one uh, executive to uh, to role model. It has to be the whole organization. And yeah. So I think I, absolutely. I was asked during during Future Minerals Forum, I said, what 
people were imp very impressed with what is going on in mod and and the discoveries that Ahmed mentioned and FOS three phosphorus three starting um, all the transformation and we're, we're getting we're getting some really good traction regionally and globally and so a reporter asked me what are, what am I doing differently and I said I'm not doing anything other than liberating the talent that was already here so somebody described it as the my my team and my employees are like diamonds and they shine but you can't see them shine until you put a black velvet cloth underneath them so jewelers display diamonds under a black velvet cloth so i kind of see that as my role in bringing out the shine to people and and providing enough air cover and yeah I, I provide some guidance and some direction but really i've been so impressed with the talent i've found here and giving people the opportunity to make decisions and to to give people the autonomy to operate. So I'm I'm just liber liberating the talent that was here, and it's a, it's a blast to watch. It is that's very beautiful, and and thank you for that. Um, sometimes you know when when are, when we're in the day to day and we're in the middle of it, um, it it takes you know a bit of time to just you know get back and think about it, think about the values, think about how we are leading. So. What's your advice for someone who's, you know, we're a, we're a big organization relatively and, you know, we're working in different departments, uh, different uh, work conditions, etc. How can each and every one of us, you know, contribute and live and embody the values? I think, I think first of all, one of the things we need to do this year and we're going to do is launch a values campaign where it really becomes front and center. And I thank you for your leadership in in prompting me to to start this because I think you know some of your great ideas, the values moments that we're gonna have in advance of every meeting now, and a lot of the campaign that you and your team have have, have launched are gonna be instrumental to make it front and center so people can always have true north when they are encountering stressful situations. So, you know, in some examples, we talk about care. Normally care is associated with environment, health and safety. And that's very important. I mean, our, the safety of our employees is one of the, is the most important thing we have to focus on. But care goes so much further beyond that. And if you think about what's going on with our facilities, we've improved the accommodations, we've improved the cafeterias, we've improved the facilities, and we're gonna to continue to. But I want people to understand that care means everything from safety to facilities, to career development, learning and development, giving people feedback and opportunities. So the more people have an understanding of what care really means, they won't walk past an employee without giving feedback or saying a kind word or encouraging them, it, it, we will embody the care value. The same way with teamwork. If uh, people really get examples and we role model teamwork like we should, um, people will realize it's okay to ask for help. You, you're not in this alone. There's none of us that can do what we have to do alone. We're, we are trying to do something that's never been done in the history of the industry and grow a company this fast. Can't do that alone. So as we think about getting the values in front of people and giving them an understanding, they will under people can understand uh, how to reflect on them properly. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned um, role modeling, and this is something you know a lot of people who uh, work with you and around you notice this about you. I mean, this is something that we see firsthand, where maybe you role model the value of continuous improvement the most where every for example every minister or every executive you meet you keep asking them uh, how they run their business or how they do what they do to tackle an issue etc how did that value or how was your behavior uh, nourished i guess well, I think part, part of it is i'm uh, i acknowledge that i don't know all, don't know everything so i'm in a in a fairly new country in a fairly new industry. So I don't have the answers and I know that. So I'm pretty fortunate. And plus I'm, you know, as Ahmed mentioned, I'm, you guys do this in a second language. So I'm always humbled by um, the, the intelligence around me and the talent that surrounds me. So I'm not going to pretend that I know the answers. I'm going to draw on people that do. And 
you know, I get a good, I got to have a great example. You know, our chairman, His Excellency Yasser Umayyan, is a, a, a continuous driver of improvement. And no matter what we accomplish, you know, massive gold discoveries, record production, he says that that's good, but we want more. We want more. And so we joking, we had a, we had a nice joking moment at the last board meeting where I said, but your excellency, I, we just hit production records and we made this massive discovery. And he said, yes, but you know, he runs diverse companies, many, you know, 10, you know, hundreds of companies for the PIF and Aramco and Live Golf and Newcastle, so much, such a diverse portfolio. And he says, the secret to success is to always question the status quo and to drive for more. And I think that's, that embodies so much of what the kingdom is doing right now. And every minister is pushing their, their, their ministry and their department and their people. We all have to question the status quo and do better every day if we're going to accomplish Vision 2030 and you know the, the modern growth strategy for 2040. There's everything is up, up, up for debate and for improvement. And I, and I tell employees, you know, there's 7,200 of us. If we could all just make one improvement every day in something, it'll, it'll start to add up and we will get massive results in the end. It doesn't need to be a massive transformation, step change every day. It just needs to be small incremental improvements, shave some cycle time off, make it make a difference in, in your process. Yep. Yeah. And that that's the thing about culture. I mean, having a great company culture can actually, you know, drive results. Um, how do you see that happening? Like, um, the values and the behaviors uh, and us from, you know, uh, the junior to to the executives, uh, are we all contributing? Absolutely. I think the there's a couple of things that are interesting about the culture of continuous improvement. If you make the improvements, you start to feel success. And when you start to feel success, you want more. And it really feels to me like in modern right now, we've got positive momentum Every department, whether it's in project development, you know, we've finished Mansura and Mansara, and now we're starting phosphate three. Explorations drilled 460,000 meters last year, biggest exploration program on the planet. After just starting 18 months ago, they've got a positive head of steam. All of the business units have so much to be proud of. We've probably saved or improved operating results by 1.8 billion SAR across the three businesses. So each of the three business units have, we've got our investment grade credit rating now. So you could just go on and on and list the accomplishments and people are feeling that success and they're seeing how they got that success. And again, I go back to teamwork. It was by breaking silos, by liberating talent, by working together, we've accomplished so much. And I think that's, so when you talk about how culture can lead to results, that this is what this is what the positive momentum that we're seeing in modern is doing right now. Yeah, yeah, and we're doing something similar, you know, with uh, with Nemo. I mean, we started about two years ago. We had, uh, you know, a structure of work streams, and as we went along, we realized some things might not be working for us, and hopefully, we know we'll continuously improve. Um, now, you know, there was one value. Uh, that is uh, really interesting and really important to me, which is the ownership value. Um, how can we embody the ownership value in Madden? So I think if, if you just go back to the new move work streams and the, and the transformation and owning it. So we started in during Ramadan of 2022, and we started with 10 value or 10 work streams, right? Along three pillars: along growth, core business performance, and people and capability. And we came out of the gate really fast. And I personally know that I, I was going too fast for the organization by the fall of 2022. People were like, we're, you're leaving us behind. We're going too fast. So I listened and we said, okay, let's slow down. Let's take it a little easy. Then I think we went a little too slow for a, cup, for a quarter or so. And then at some point we said, wait a minute, 10 isn't enough. We need to expand to include the ERP transformation and data management and ESG and safety and a couple of other things. So we added, we added eight. Then we had 18 work streams. 
And that became a little too burdensome, a little too big. So then we said, you know, just recently in last November, we said, okay, some of these are now part of the way we do business. And we don't need to call them new work streams. They've already been transformed. Exploration, project development, the three business units. So, you know, the transformation continues to evolve. And part of it is it evolves because we realize it's okay to make changes. And I tell people with, with ownership, you are, we're responsible for getting results. And we're responsible to make decisions and we're responsible to take action. But with that, I guarantee we'll make mistakes and that's okay. We've got to learn from mistakes. We can't make repeated, the same mistakes repeatedly, but we are going at such a pace that I expect people to take initiatives and sometimes they're going to get it wrong. And I, you know, so I want people to have ownership for the results and own the mistakes as well. There's nothing wrong with a mistake as long as you learn from it and you acknowledge it. Don't make excuses. Don't blame people. Don't cover it up. Just be clear. We'll get over it. And like I said, with the, with the transformation, everybody's got a chance to witness the, the learning of the CEO as we slow down, speed up, change. It's, it's fine. Talking about mistakes, I think Sha'al did one mistake this morning when she gave me only one question because I cannot <laughs> hold myself. I mean, talking about the values, the culture, the team dynamics, how you think all of these shape the company image? Well, one of the, one of the values we haven't talked about is integrity because I think integrity means we have to set the example and do everything right. So we've talked about how fast we want to move, how big of a change we want to make, et cetera. We, we're going to allow mistakes in the process. Can't allow integrity mistakes because, as we talked about earlier, the world is watching now. The whole world came to, came to Riyadh to see what we're doing in the kingdom in metals and mining. The whole world at Davos was interested in what's going on in Saudi Arabia. That's, there's a huge opportunity to improve the image of Maden, the image of the kingdom. Um, but we've got to do things right. There's no place for shortcuts. There's no place for take, you know, going around policies and procedures. If policies and procedures need modified, we will. But in our haste to change and go fast, we've got to do it exactly right because the world is watching. Our shareholders are watching. Our communities are, are watching. Our employees are watching. So integrity, living that value is a great chance to mold our image, not only in our results, but how we get the results. Still, I cannot hold myself. I have another question. <laughs> that, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we are in a competition on talents here in the kingdom and many of them will watch this episode. What is your message to them? So we will live our care value. So I, I believe that if you think about what we need to do over the next 10, 15 years, we need to triple the size of our workforce. We want to build phosphate three, phosphate four, phosphate five, another pot line in aluminum, another refinery, four or five more gold mines, a copper mine. So we've got massive growth on the horizon. And in order to staff that growth, we need the best and brightest people in the kingdom. That's why I am so obsessed with living the care value because we are in a war for talent. So not only are we growing, but tourism's growing, sports and entertainment's growing. The downstream industries that our minerals are gonna fuel, aerospace, auto, EV batteries, steel, shipbuilding. Then you have the, the perennial powerhouses, Aramco and Sabic, STC, SEC, all the PIF. So this is a land of opportunity. And if we don't treat our people as good as the gold we mine, we will not attract and retain that talent. So my message to people that are interested in joining Modern are give us a try. We will take care of you from the day you're recruited till after you retire. You're going to be treated with dignity and respect. We're going to give you opportunities. We're going to give you challenges. We're going to train you. We're going to push you hard. We're going to give you feedback. But you're going to be part of something very special in building the third pillar of the Saudi economy. Do you have any more questions? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were good questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we want to be the employer of choice. And, you know, like you said, treat people like gold. So it's not just, you know, uh, 
you or the managers, it's us and our colleagues and having that good collaboration and teamwork environment, it's a... Uh, it's really important and that's something that we we find alhamdulillah in uh, in our departments and that is actually something whenever i speak with the uh, people from different departments they keep telling me i have a good team i, I you know i like working with my team and it's uh, it's really good um, really good to hear and i think the it's also important for people to realize that just because we want to treat people like gold it doesn't mean it's easy you know, I love my daughters more than anything in the world, but they will tell you that dad was pretty hard on them sometimes because I love them. So I, we have high expectations. We push hard. We, we are results oriented and we're driven, but it's because we are proud of what we're doing. We're proud of our company. We're proud of our country and we want to continue to, to improve. And that means, you know, we have to, we have to drive pretty hard sometimes, but in doing so, I think you can see that you know, what we're creating here is a lot of fun. It's we laugh a lot, we joke a lot, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we work hard. Yeah, and you know, this is something that uh, the, we want to have like this this culture of feedback, where feedback is very important and very uh, central central to the growth, to my growth, to my colleagues, my coworkers' growth. How can we give like a really good feedback? I think part of it is it's a it's a practice skill. And I think as we roll out the values campaign and we talk about it, we talk about continuous improvement, continuous improvement sometimes, and it, and it goes with integrity as well. You have to have the integrity and the the honesty with yourself to begin with. Like we, none of us are perfect. L let's accept that. OK, we all are good at some things. We all need improvement in some things. Acknowledge that. I mean, I tell people I get on the scale every morning and it, it is what it is. I wish sometimes it said 207, but it says 211. It is what it is. So I can do something about it now. And the same thing with work performance. None of us get it right all the time. And there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that and, and coming up to a colleague and saying, you know, you, you could have done this a little bit better or asking for help even. So I think continuous improvement starts with an honest assessment and enough integrity to realize that we all need improvement. And then once we get over that hurdle in our minds, that mental block, then it becomes a lot easier to give feedback. I mean, Ahmed gives me feedback all the time and it's, it's in good, I take it in good humor. Sometimes it's not meant to be in good humor. You know, it's, it's serious, Bob, you can't say that. You need to slow down here, speed up here, address this issue. But I couldn't do it without feedback from Ahmed and the rest of my team. So I think people have to get over the, the mental block that they can do it by themselves and they have all the answers because we don't. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Bob, this is a, a question like I'm personally curious about. Uh, so we have, you know, the, the five values, right? Do you have a personal value? So I think, you know, I talked about my family, so family and country, I would say, are two things that drive me as well. And, um, and when we talk about my family, I've got two daughters. So I tell people that, you know, 50% of the population is female and 100% of my offspring are female. So I really am passionate about delivering the kingdom mandate of diversifying the workforce and the... Uh, what we're seeing in modern now, I mean, evidenced by you and and your colleagues, you know, there was one and a half percent females in modern two years ago, and we've doubled that every year since. So we're about at six percent now. I don't know if we can keep that pace going, but I want to. I want to make sure that everybody in the kingdom realizes that there is an opportunity for you here at modern, male or female. And part of it, I say, is a math problem. We, we're we're trying to attract. The, the best and brightest talent in the kingdom to grow this company. And we need everybody, male and female. So um, just a just an advertisement there for young Saudi female talent to, to think about the metals and mining industry, which is a non-traditional industry for females to think about. But with technology advancements and other things, we need the talent. So family's a value and then country. I mean, I was in the army for eight years and uh, I'm a proud American. I don't, I don't mask that at all. But Saudi's my adopted country, and I love it as well. So I'm very, very driven by, 
via patriotism. Yeah, Saudi is easy to love. It is yeah. easy to love. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ahmed? My personal value? Yeah. I think uh, integrity, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. is always my, my personal value because no matter how smart you are, how competent you are, if you lack integrity, there is no point of everything you are doing. So for me, integrity mm -hmm. comes first. Great. Thank you. So we're nearing the end of our podcast. Uh, Bob, do you want to say anything in conclusion? So thank you for the opportunity to talk. I, uh, you know, Somebody asked me recently what, I, what my favorite thing to do in Saudi Arabia was, and I've gotten an opportunity to travel around and see all the sites. But my favorite thing in Saudi Arabia continues to be talking to Saudis and talking to the people. And I look forward to getting out and seeing the plants again during Ramadan. We're planning, planning our tours. So look forward to seeing everybody soon. And until that, continue to uh, do great work for us and live those values. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bob. It was an honor and a privilege to have the Good first time. podcast <laughs> with you. And thank you, Ahmed, right. for the great podcast before. And I learned a lot from you. And uh, open for feedback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thank you all. Thank you.